What's up people? Today we're going to configure the uh, simplex repeater from Argent Data that's way over there on my backpack right there and it's got a radio hooked up to it and today we're going to configure that for uh, my specifications to what I want how it to operate. The first few steps of the series was uh, needed to go ahead and have that to be accomplished because the uh, simplex repeater needs to have tones sent to it telephone tones DTMF to conf to configure the uh, simplex repeater here and the only way I could do that would be to interface the radio to it and then transmitting tones from another radio there are other ways to do that with you know if you have uh, test equipment and stuff like that but this is the easiest for all you guys to, to, to do it uh, because that would take more equipment and, and not everybody has equipment so this is the minimum that you'll need to program this device as is it's already ready to go factory default settings it's already ready to go and uh, but these are extra steps that I want to put into it extra features that I want to program into it that would uh, customize it for for our use so right now I got this configured how I want it but I'm gonna do a master reset to this and erase everything and bring everything back to factory default so I could go step by step the settings that I put into it. This thing has many commands to it that you can program into this radio here and uh, some of it may be useful, a lot of it is not useful. Uh, the only commands I'm gonna to cover today are the ones that are important to me. And all the other ones, I guess you're gonna to have to research yourself but uh, I want to program this thing the way I like it so the first command that I want to put into this is the master reset uh, and what it, what it'll do is this particular code would be it resets all the settings to factory default and erases all messages so it'll be like it just came out of the factory line uh, I call it the nuclear option it just erases everything so that command is pound, which is this money sign down here, pound, pound, 97. Did you hear that? Two lower beeps, the boop, boop. That means this unit is locked out. I need to put in my access code to open up the simplex repeater for me to have access to give it commands and program it. So to do that, I need to press my, the code and the default code that I use was 321. That is the code to have access to this thing. And once I transmit that code over to the simplex repeater, it'll transmit back to me three high beeps, which is acknowledge. So here we go. Pound, pound, three, two, one. So I have access now. So now I could do the pound, pound, 97 to do the factory reset. Now let's do a nuclear option. Total reset, back to factory defaults. Pound, pound, 97. Those, there's the three beeps. So right now it's doing a master reset. Everything is going to be wiped clean. So then when it does that, it goes into repeat mode and it gives you a roger beep at the end. So that'll tell me that everything is reset back to factory default. So testing factory default. Factory default. You heard that that uh, Roger beep at the end, that, that tone? That's the default setting for that. So now this thing is wiped clean. Okay, so let's get that Roger beep out of the way because uh, I don't want any tones to be transmitted out there along with your voice transmission because that is somewhat of a alert. Your ear will train into that tone and pay more attention to where just having your regular voice that could glaze over people and uh, 
what do you call it, uh, they might ignore it or whatever. So I don't want any unnecessary beeps, noise, or, or, or bumps in the night. So the code for that is pound, pound, one, two, zero. Pound, pound, one, two, zero. Here are the three beeps. Acknowledged. And right now I could do a test to see if that Roger beep is still there. Roger beep disabled. Roger beep disabled. And you didn't hear no Roger beep after that. So now the next step I want to do is activate the voicemail feature. It comes disabled, defaulted from the factory. So pound, pound, seven, three. Copy, can I go in the bar? There it is. The voicemail is activated on this, and we'll test that later. Papa, can I go in the water? You want to go in the water? Mm -hmm. So there isn't no particular order to program this thing because uh, the instructions are are uh, it, it goes through a different order. There's really no order to it, but I think this order that I'm showing you right now uh, would prevent a lot of problems, like activating the voicemail, so you could configure the voicemail option later on. Uh, that's just that's just me. So. Don't get hung up on order or anything like that. Okay, the next step that I want to do is uh, put in the voicemail access code. The command for that is pound pound zero seven and then a three digit number tone to uh, activate it. So this is the voicemail access code. And I'm gonna use the access code 456. And I have to do it twice. So this is the, the sequence. Pound, pound, zero, seven, four, five, six, four, five, six. And let's see if it'll accept it. It did. Okay, so that code is in there. And now for the security code for the entire device to have access to making changes and commands. And that is pound, pound, zero, eight, three, two, one, three, two, one. 321 will be my access code to the whole device and you heard the three beeps. This, we're gonna get deep into this now. The next command I wanna put in there is the set auto lock timer. And I'm gonna put that for 30 minutes. And what that is is, once you put in your security code, you could either manually lock it up, lock the device up, or after 30 minutes, it'll do it for you. But you could change that time. You could be five minutes, 20 seconds, uh, two days. But I'm gonna use 30 minutes. So you can make all the changes that you want, in interrogate the messages and, and announcements that's already saved in the, in the device. And so you don't have to always put in that access code. And another thing uh, as well is you don't want to transmit your access code a lot of times too because then somebody snooping around could just uh, record it, decipher it, and use it against you. So I'm just going to use it that one time. So after 30 minutes, it'll lock up on its own, the device will. So that'll be command pound pound zero nine three zero for 30 minutes and accepted it so that's on there remember the three high beep says acknowledge command and I did it now there's a thing called say again I don't remember if it's uh, defaulted to be enabled or disabled but if somebody your last repeated message that this device has done you could press zero on this transmit a zero and it'll repeat the last repeated message that this device done so let's see what's in its memory and let's see if it's activated. Transmit, zero. Roger beep disabled. That was the last Daddy, message. I'm going to go in the water. Okay, go in the water. Hold on, hold on. That was the last message that I transmitted and it repeated it. So that's activated. And the code for that, if it wasn't enabled, is pound pound one four one. To disable it is pound pound one four zero. In the manual that they send you, all these commands will be in there. This is just a demonstration and explanation of all the commands that I deem important. So if you remember from the last video, configuring the radio, 
I put a timeout timer for 60 seconds. If, if you transmit longer than 60 seconds, the radio is going to stop transmitting until you let off and transmit again. That's to prevent overheating of the radio, you yakking a lot, uh, as well as maybe a stuck transmitter. If the radio gets stuck transmitting all the time, it's just going to keep transmitting and transmitting. And you might get a, uh, a team of fox hunters out there, amateur fox hunters, uh, triangulate, find it. And uh, usually they will just call you if you have your ID on there and say, hey, your radio has messed up. Um, we found it and we disabled it for you. Uh, hams are just uh, very, I should say, courteous like that. But in an emergency, uh, you know, you don't want that thing locking up on you. So the radio has got a timeout timer for 60 seconds. There is a separate timeout timer for the uh, recorder itself. It's got its own as well for the same reason. And this model of a simplex repeater, uh, I bought it a couple of years ago, and the total amount of, of recording time is 218 seconds, which turns out to be 3.63 minutes. The newer model for 15 bucks extra, uh, for a total price of $104, is 867 seconds, four times as much uh, message capacity than the standard model. Uh, and it's got a total of 14 and a half minutes so the model that I have now I want to regulate the uh, timeout timer to 30 seconds to evenly spread apart all the messages and announcements and and repeated information to, uh, for efficiency if I had the uh, the latest model that has uh, 14 minutes of recording time then I would expand that to 60 seconds per message, per announcement, per repeated message. Though in reality, I will probably do no more than 15 seconds of traffic and that's being long winded for me. So the code to program the timeout timer for the simplex repeater is pound pound one seven zero three zero. It accepted it so now it's got a timeout timer for 30 seconds later on I'm going to reprogram my radio to put the timeout timer for that for 35 seconds I want the radio to go a little bit longer than the simplex repeater but not much somewhat close to each other now this next setting that I think is important is called uh, set minimum transmission time and what that is 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 let's say you send a message saying hey honey I'll be home in a few minutes it'll record that and repeat it to you so let's say uh, somebody out there have access to your repeater or they're conchunking they're doing a test to see if it'll work that means they transmit for a little bit let off real quick and then they hear that conchunk uh, sound in the background so uh, let me let me just do a split second of what I'm talking about so uh, let's say later on I want to find out who was the last person or the last message that was in the uh, machine so I say uh, I'll give it the say again command zero honey I'll be home in a minute now let's say by mistake or something I go uh, uh, wait I just say wait and and I stop my uh, transmission but I didn't want that to happen or uh, even quicker than that See, that split second it recorded that and now your last message is, is uh, gone for good. Ah. And that's all you have as your last transmission. So I want to make that time, the minimum amount of time that it registers something being transmitted into it and say, okay, this is a valid message, record it and do the process of repeating. So I'm going to put it for 0.6 seconds. So that'll be pound, pound, one, nine, zero, six. It accepted it, so let's test it. So a good test for this would be, uh, but sometimes you have to time it, align it, and, and, and 
calibrate that so it'll work efficiently. So the test is, you have to say a, a, a typical command that you might encounter, an emergency command that says, don't shoot. That is the command, don't shoot. The time should be short enough to where it would register, don't shoot, but if, if you just say one word or anything less than that time period to, to, to configure the don't shoot command, it would uh, ignore it. So I'm just going to say don't. Don't. It didn't repeat. Don't. It didn't repeat. Now let's do don't shoot. The quote unquote rule of thumb, the don't shoot standard. Don't shoot. Don't shoot. It recorded that. Don't. Didn't record that. Don't shoot. Don't shoot. So, so that's the timing, the minimum timing that the device needs for it to register a valid transmission. And don't shoot is the quote unquote standard for that time. That's sort of a field expedient uh, standard aligned it to where in, in my setup here is 0.6 of a second, a little bit over half a second. Now the, this next group of commands is more for so troubleshooting and sort of housekeeping. The first command that I think is important is uh, report usage count. So I think it keeps account of every time that this device has been accessed, used, or re or yeah, basically how many times it's been it has been used since it's been reset or powered up. So the command for that would be pound pound nine six, and what that it'll transmit back to you in Morse code the number of times that this device has been used up and notice the speed of the Morse code. Six. That is too fast for me to keep up with. I don't know Morse code. Uh, I would have to look, look up that code to see what that number would be. And like I said, to me that that speed is too fast. It's going, the setting for that defaulted from the factory is 80. So let's set that speed lower. And after doing some experimenting, uh, I set mine for 35. It comes defaulted, it, it, it comes defaulted at 80, but I'm gonna s uh, slow it down to 35 words per minute, I, I think it is. I don't know, it, it doesn't really tell you how many words per minute that it transmits, so. The command for that is pound pound eight one three five. Pound pound eight one three five. It accepted the command, and let's see how fast this thing is now. Uh, pound pound nine six. Pound pound nine six. slowed it down to where my slow ass ears could, could decipher that or at least write it down and look it up later. Now this next command is reset unit without affecting the settings or recorded messages. So it's like going up to the hill and, and going up to the simplex repeater, turning it off and turning it back on again. And when you do that, it will not affect what you programmed into it and it would retain all its uh, messages except for the simplex uh, except for the uh, last recorded message that would be that's volatile that would go away but your announcements and your messages will still be intact so all that is is uh, pound pound nine nine it accepted that and theoretically the thing is uh, resetting itself. Now the last command that I think is useful is what I call the nuclear option and that was the setting that I that I did in the beginning of the video to reset the device back to factory defaults so it'll reset completely and erase everything and that is pound pound nine seven which I do not want to do right now because and now the simplex repeater is uh, configured that whole setup is completely configured for operations uh, to my specifications. So
so the next step that I want to do or the next video would be uh, my personal standard operating procedure to utilize this device and what I like about this device is yes I brought it I configured it I'm gonna use it and I'm gonna administer it but I also want to share it I want to share it with at least at least three groups that I know of that I've met personally uh, pre preppers or guys that do videos on YouTube that, that, that I've met and are in my state I would like to extend uh, my offer of having them utilize this simplex repeater for their communications bug in bug out plan uh, especially one person that's really near me uh, we're separated by, by 50 miles in a mountain ridge so he cannot talk to me directly he cannot talk to me directly on the radio but with the simplex repeater once it's deployed we will have that option not only that these individuals these uh, three or four groups that I'm gonna uh, you know who you are I've met you and we talk and there's one that I haven't met, but I've corresponded uh, with PMs and stuff. Uh, you guys could have a sort of mailbox, a simplex repeater mailbox that you could use to leave messages to your loved ones when you're bugging in, bugging out, or in transition from a disaster to, to one place or another if you get separated by your family. And I'll cover that completely on my next video. Uh, the usage of this device, the capabilities and the configurations that you can have this to where it'll be really efficient and somewhat unique to this uh, setup. Uh, unlike repeaters which is you make your message once and then, and then that's it. It, it, it. it doesn't store your messages or anything like that. Uh, the person that you're trying to contact would, would have to be in the area or in range to to receive your message at that particular moment where this records it to be picked up later on when that other separated loved one comes through that area within range and, and interrogates the answering machine because all this is is an radio simplex repeater answering machine message answering machine that will integrate their mailbox to find out what's the scoop and like I said I'll cover that in the next video I'm gonna go back to enjoying the creek here I'm gonna get into that pool there and uh, cool off and uh, have a wonderful weekend with my kids Gorilla Geek going 10-10